Welcome to the Kansas Barn Alliance and the Kansas State Historic Preservation Office videos on basic historic barn repair. These programs were excerpted from a five-day barn repair training workshop in Donovan County, Kansas in the summer of 2010. It was organized by the Kansas Barn Alliance and funded in part with federal funds from the National Park Service and administered by the Kansas Historical Society and the in-kind support from Frank Films of Manhattan, Kansas. The workshop itself was conducted by Trillium Dell Timberworks of Knoxville, Illinois. We're grateful to the many folks who assisted in the workshop and the video, as well as the owner of this particular barn, Sharon Stoddenmeyer. This particular barn would have been used for horses. Um, along the west wall was the horse manger. We can kind of tell by the way the timber in the manger were, was chewed up. A uh, really unique thing in this barn, though, that I've not seen uh, above the basement portion are three very large grain bins. You usually would not see such large grain bins in a small barn like that, so apparently the supply possibly for cattle that might have been kept across the road would have been kept here, uh, and the three bins would have housed corn, wheat, and oats probably having been raised right here on the farm. The joinery in the haymow is uh, really quite beautiful. It's a mortise and tenon pegged together. Uh, originally, this barn uh, had a hay fork that came down through the middle to uh, grab the loose hay off the wagon and was pulled up to the ridge and hooked into the trolley and then taken to either the east or the west mow and dropped, but uh, with the coming of baled hay, they put a floor over that center portion so that uh, the bales went up an elevator on the north side and uh, they didn't need that hole in the middle. This particular barn had a failure in the west foundation for one thing, that is the ground part of the barn, the east end that is closest to the camera is the bank part, which has a room below the haymow floor. And uh, the foundation, unfortunately, was not deep enough to get below the frost line. So over time, the barn has sort of ridden up and down as winter came and went. And so the uh, foundation wall had crumbled out from under the west end and the sill plate had pushed out and the posts had pushed out. And it was your pretty typical barn lift. Uh, you know, you see a lot of these barns that the foundations crumble or the joinery fails. Uh, whether that be from, you know, again, uh, bad concrete work or maybe the cattle over the years have destroyed the you know, the barn or kicked it off its foundation or uh, storm damage, whatever the case may be. Just briefly here, uh, you know, we'll just kind of go over what we want to try to accomplish this week. And uh, the big uh, thing is to lift this into the building. Uh, we're going to strip off some siding boards and uh, we're going to screw two by fives to the side of each post. Uh, and then we build cribbing towers, which are just you know, four by fours or six by sixes that you place like this as you go up and have something for the five by fives to sit on and you can leave your barn lifted. We'll lift them up with bottle jacks. I mean, this is very simple. It's something that anybody really could do. And I think once you guys see it, um, you know, you'll be kind of like, well, it's a lot easier than I thought it's gonna be. And then uh, we'll pull that wall in. Uh, it looks like the bottom 10 feet's kicked out a couple inches. So um, again, some simple rigging, some lug alls, um, you know, you tie it back into maybe something that's a little sturdier back in the barn and really you'd be surprised on how well that will work. Uh, joinery really likes to be where it wants to be and so when it's stressed and it's pulled and it's pushed, um, it really, you know, you give it a little help and it almost fixes itself, really. That really kind of fulfills this end of the building with the exception of um, this joint separated and you know that one's come out a bit but I don't know that that joint's failed it could just be that that barn is sitting down that and pulling that 
pulling that joint out. This joint has failed. Uh, now we know that the relish is still good. In other words, the area behind the wood peg, which is called the relish in the tenon, we know that's good because we would be able to see if it was broken, um, being as it's a through tenon. So probably what has happened is, you know, the building's fallen, there's been massive amounts of weight of hay in the hayloft, and uh, the peg is probably sheared, or both pegs have sheared. That's probably what has happened. And uh, so what we'll do once we get the barn up, we'll try to squeeze this together as best we can. Uh, we probably actually won't get this all the way back into the bottom of the housing. We're gonna try, uh, but we'll get probably half or three quarters of that out. And then um, we'll do a couple things. We initially were gonna use what we call a shear ring. Unfortunately, we have these knee braces in the way which are preventing us to do that. So what we probably will do, um, I brought a lot of flat stock. And what we'll do is we'll just, we'll still install a shear ring here and we'll install a shear ring here and we'll take a big strap of metal and we'll go all the way around the post and we'll lag it in and that will work. Anybody, you guys wanna go upstairs? See what we got going up there? Everybody okay with climbing? This is what's called a canted queen post roof system. These are the queen posts. And sometimes they're canted or at an angle like this. Other times uh, they just sit up vertically. You know, so I don't know. Uh, sometimes they don't exist at all. Sometimes it's a king post truss system. But um, this is pretty common for the Midwest. This is actually a very well built barn. Um, you'll notice these scarf joints here, um, which, you know, barns this old usually look a lot worse. Uh, you know, you have some separation here, but all in all, uh, it's in really good shape. It's still working. Uh, they've pegged here and here on both sides of the post with two pegs each. And then, of course, the tenon. The tenon actually probably comes up to here to help lock that in as well. Now here, um, this is probably a good candidate for epoxy, like an Abitron. Um, Things are still pretty well held together. Um, you know, certainly there's damage there. Yeah, it's right down right. the Right. Mm-hmm. So again, probably a minor leak in the roof. You know, the, the scarf, still in pretty good shape. Uh, we don't really have any separation here. This workshop, as you said, was intended for the common person. What advice do you have people that want to do things themselves? Uh, my first piece of advice is stay safe. It's a pretty straightforward process, but when things go wrong, they go wrong quickly. So don't do anything that you're unsure of. If you need consultation, you know, call a professional. You know, take it slow. If you need to spend a few extra bucks to get the right tools, you know, do it. Uh, it's only going to make your job easier. To do something like this, uh, where you know you might come for a week and do it and think that, okay, well, this is pretty straightforward. It is pretty straightforward. If you try to do it without the right tools, uh, it's going to make it a lot harder for you. Um, so first thing, you know, obviously, you know, stay safe. Again, um, make sure your cribbing towers are level. That essentially is what's holding up your barn for however many months, maybe a year, um, until you can get it back down or get your concrete or whatever work you want done. You know, other than that, you know, have, have fun with it. I mean, it's, it is pretty straightforward. It can be a lot of fun, you know, like we had here this week. But, you know, beyond, um, beyond staying safe and, you know, maybe buying the right tool for the job and, uh, you know, maybe, maybe calling on somebody, um, whether you know, that's a carpenter friend of yours or a guy who is a general contractor or maybe you want to call a professional timber framer, um, you know, and, and having the right tools for the job, you know, have fun with it.